What is the best way to design the architecture of a complex system? Some people use freeform diagramming tools, while others keep it old school and write it out by hand. Most don't realize that there is a much better way to clearly and effectively convey how a system works. The key is to use the sequence diagram, and in this video, I'm going to teach you what they are, what tool you should use to create your own, and show you how to get started making your first diagram. So let's start by answering what is a sequence diagram. A UML sequence diagram is a visualization tool that helps you understand how components interact with each other over time. They consist of three main components. Actors, which are participants of the system, such as a user, service, or a database. Messages, which are interactions between components, such as an API or function call. And conditionals, which indicate deviation in standard behavior, such as if-else blocks or for loops. Standard architecture diagrams like this one can also communicate how a system works, but they're missing one vital component. Time. Trying to convey timing can be done using numbered bubbles like we see here but this can get hard to understand for systems with a lot of interactions. Now, because sequence diagrams are written with time in mind, they're much better at showing the details of how components interact. You can easily understand what each component does and when. This gives clarity to the overall architecture. Beyond system design, sequence diagrams can be useful in other scenarios like API design or at an even lower level like defining how classes in a code base interact with each other. As a senior software engineer working at Amazon for over a decade now, I can tell you that the best design documents tend to contain sequence diagrams. They're used by junior all the way up to principal and senior principal engineers, and they're an essential tool in any software developer's toolkit. Learning how to use them is a key skill that you need to have, and I'm going to show you how. But before you can become an expert in diagramming, you first need to decide which tool you like to use. So let's talk about some of the options. Most people tend to default to using a free form architecture diagramming tool. A common one to use is draw.io or lucidcharts. These tools are great choices except for one critical issue. They're slow. Creating a sequence diagram in them takes way too many steps. Creating boxes, connecting them with arrows, drawing lines, dragging and dropping components, the list goes on and on. Heaven forbid you make a mistake or need to rearrange the order of things, this can create a real headache. Instead, a much better way to create sequence diagrams is using an absolutely free tool called Plant UML. And before you ask, no, this is not a sponsored video and I am not affiliated with them in any way. I just know a good tool when I see one. With Plant UML, you create your sequence diagrams using a simple to learn text-based syntax. After every change, the tool auto-generates your new diagram as a PNG or SVG file. This makes it easy to iterate quickly and experiment with different design options. On top of that, you can embed your diagram's text definition into your company's source control alongside your code so that you can keep track of it over time. Now, Plant UML was created in 2009, but it's still one of the most popular diagramming tools because it's both simple and effective and does what you need it to do without all the fluff. It has a huge community of supporters that can help answer questions. You can even use your favorite LLM like ChatGPT to help you get your syntax just right. Now, let me show you how to get started using Plant UML by creating a simple system with a handful of components that interact with one another. The first thing you want to do is open up your browser and head over to this URL. This website is called the Plant UML Web Server, and it allows you to create your sequence diagram right here in the browser. Don't ask me why this URL is so weird and ugly looking. I guess it's just an artifact of a really old tool. Now keep in mind that if you're designing systems for confidential projects, you may want to set up a local installation of Plant UML on your own machine. The reason that this is important is because diagrams that you make are public by default. So if you were to take this URL and paste it into your browser, you'd be able to see the corresponding diagram. You can host a private Plant UML web server by cloning the Plant UML Git repo that I'll leave a link to in the description section of this video. But for now, we're going to keep things simple and use the browser-based version of the Plant UML web server. Now, one thing I like to do is switch the orientation of the Plant UML web server. You can do this by clicking on this button right here. This way, as your diagram grows, you can see both of your code on the left-hand side and the diagram on the right in one view. For this diagram, we're going to be using a customer order workflow, pretending that we're placing an order on an e-commerce website. I'm using the skin command with the field rows to give our diagram the classic red and yellow feel, but there's a lot of other skins that you can choose from as well. Here I'm simply giving ourselves a title, and now we're adding the different components of the system. There's two different types, actors and participants. Actors refer to humans, while participants refer to non-human components like services or databases. 
Now we're gonna add an interaction between the customer and the website. You can see the notation is pretty simple. First, we say the name of the component, which is customer, followed by a dash and an open triangular bracket, and then the name of the second component, which is website. After the colon, we see the message, which is clicking the place order button. And that's all you really need to know in order to create a message. Now we're showing a couple more interactions like the website calling the order service API and then the order service calling the customer service to validate the user's customer ID. So far, everything has been moving from left to right, but here's how to indicate a response when interacting with a component. Notice in the image, we have a dotted line. This is done by using the double dash and the bracket in your code. We can also indicate when a component wants to do some kind of internal evaluation. You do this by simply referencing yourself in your code and then providing the message. Now here's how to add a if else block. It's called a alt statement in plant UML. So you can say alt some kind of condition such as customer.getState is disabled. And then within the alt, you can add your specific logic. To add an else if, we simply say else and then the condition. And now we're gonna add a for loop that's gonna iterate over some items on the customer object followed by saving each of the items in an internal database. We can pause here for a moment to see how our diagram is starting to take a pretty cool form. Now, another cool thing you can do with Plant UML is add embedded notes into your diagram to provide additional context. To do this is pretty simple. You just say note and then the direction and then of followed by the component. So here I'm saying note to the right of order service just to remind myself to refactor something a little bit later on. Finally, we'll close out our diagram by providing a final success response code. And there you have it, your first UML sequence diagram. I find the best way to learn these types of diagrams is to start with a reference example and then start modifying it to your liking. If you wanna use this diagram as your own reference, I'll leave the code in the description section below that you can paste into your plant UML web server to examine it and play with it as you please.